Do you go to put gas in your late model F-Series Ford pickup truck and the pump keeps turning off like the tank is full? This is a common problem that has a very simple solution. Those two little holes are vents for the fuel line and they're probably clogged with dirt. If you get underneath of your truck and look where the fuel filler neck is, you'll see a larger tube and then also a smaller tube. The smaller tube is the vent that goes back to the evaporative canister, which is full of charcoal. See where this is located because I removed the spare tire and all the dirt that came down with it. Up inside the frame rails, you'll see several different connections that connect to that evaporative canister. One is an electrical connection. There's a larger one, which is the vent tube. And then there's a smaller blue fitting and a larger red fitting, which go to your fuel tank and go back to the charcoal box. You can see that this tube goes up into the frame rail and then when you pull the vent out of the frame rail it's caked with mud. It's a very common problem and it needs to be cleaned out. Now I don't take my truck four-wheeling and I did buy it used the Carfax said that it came from Texas and I imagine it was an oil field truck because there's mud just jammed into the frame all over the place. This is pre-existing mud from when I got the truck. Now since I took down the spare tire, that uh, cover and the, the evaporative canister uh, charcoal box have already been removed. And what I'm going to do is, uh, it's easier if I show you how I put it back because everything was so muddy, it just made a mess and I really couldn't film it. So I took the parts out and then covered the connections with a plastic bag and a zip tie and power washed everything just to get it clean. It's much easier to work on things uh, when they're not full of mud. Now you can see also I've got some compressed air and I'm going to put the compressed air, I only had it at about 30 PSI, it wasn't very powerful. And I'm going to put that in the end of the tube and blow that out. Uh, the first time I did it, all sorts of dirt came out of it, but just for purposes of demonstration, you can see I'm going to blow some air through it here, and it will come out the other end where the connection fits into the frame rail. And then it's just a poor design, and it's really susceptible to having mud get caught in it. I'm mostly using some compressed air to blow the connectors off, but I ended up, when I was... Uh, done with everything, spraying them with some penetrating oil and just cleaning everything out with a paper towel and getting it nice and clean. In this picture here you can just see the level of mud I was dealing with. This is the old charcoal canister that I took out of the truck. It's plastic and it's full of charcoal inside of it and then there's like another breather element type thing on top. I bought a new one from O'Reilly Auto Parts in Florida here, and I called in the morning and they had it in the afternoon. It was about $120. They give you both of these parts, but you do need to take that little 90-degree uh, elbow fitting off to be used later. You can see that it was just covered with mud inside and out, which is going to cause a fault with a check engine light or make the fuel pump shut down at the gas station. Just removing the box dropped about five pounds of mud onto the garage floor. On the right is the new charcoal canister I bought and you can see that it already has that little breather element on top. And on the left is the old bracket I just cleaned up and I was going to reuse it. It fits right in and it just has, uh, you use your existing screws and it attaches in four different places. Also within the frame are those little captive nut things that slide over the frame holes and then you can just put the screws right in there. So you just reuse them.
You can see I put little plastic bags and zip ties over all the connections just to keep any water or mud from getting introduced into the system while I was power washing it. And then once I connected everything, uh, or I wiped it off first with uh, some WD-40 and a paper towel and then put everything back where it belongs. There's that vent that goes in the frame rail and then these are those blue and red connectors. They're different sizes and as are the male fittings on the charcoal canister so it's pretty idiot proof. Also before you put the charcoal canister back into the frame make sure you line up those little clips so the, the screws will fit right into them. This is that elbow that gets reused off of that top breather element. It's pretty difficult to get off but just pull and it will come off. I found it was easiest to mount the box into the frame and then put the elbow in the vent tube and then pop it into place. There, Torx had T40 screws and there are four of them. Since the spare tire assembly is rarely used and it's exposed to the elements on a working truck, I took the opportunity to try to clean up and lube everything I could. The cable that drops the spare tire down I cleaned off and then sprayed some white lithium grease on it. And then this is also a good time to check the air pressure in the spare tire. This one takes 65 psi and it only had 40 in it so I inflated it to the proper air pressure and then I sprayed it with some WD-40. I figured it would help keep it from rusting any further and make it that much easier next time I have to take it out because usually you get flats when you are least expecting it. Then I slid the 100 pound spare tire and wheel back into place and passed the cable through the center of the wheel making sure it was lined up and then I cranked it back into place. I should have shown all this in the beginning of the video but I didn't. Hopefully you know how to take the spare tire down using the included jack and different tools they give you. Before I tighten it all the way up I just made sure that all the pieces were aligned correctly so it wouldn't bind and for those of you that weren't sure how to raise and lower the spare tire you have to assemble this rod and put it in to the right of the license plate and on the very end of it is a locking like a lug wrench type thing that should be in your glove compartment or your console but it's unique to the truck it's that silver thing that attaches onto the little curved end It has a spring-loaded little tip and it just pulls off and then before I put it away I was sure to clean the dirt out and I sprayed it with a little bit of penetrating oil just to keep it from rusting and then put it back in its little zippered pouch with its identification card and it went back into the glove compartment. Once I was done with all the parts, I sprayed them down with some penetrating oil also and took everything apart and put it back in its case, which stores back behind the passenger side rear seat. Ironically, the only difficulty that I encountered in this whole process was getting the jack and the rod out of the back of the truck. It had rusted uh, where the bolt holds down everything to keep it from rattling 
and I actually used a pair of pliers and vice grips and broke the bolt getting it out. That's the bolt right there and the top of it came apart. So if I was stranded on the side of the road, I would have been out of luck. But fortunately, I got it all cleaned up and put everything back together. Then I just finished hosing off everything else and clean up the driveway and I was done.